So in this video, we're going to do 7.3, which is volumes. I am going to split this video up into three separate videos because there are really three types of volumes that you have. So you have volumes that are cross sections, and then there are two different types of volumes when you have a region in the XY plane that you then revolve around an axis. So those are going to be um, solids of revolution. So that's going to be a little bit different. So we'll, I'll talk about those in other videos. So this one is going to be cross sections. So in these types of problems, you have a region that is going to be your base. And you also need to be told what shape the cross sections are going to be and which axis they are going to be perpendicular to. So those are going to be really important things to make sure that you read carefully in the problems. And so I'll go through a couple examples of those in this video. It does just take practice, so we will do a lot of practice in class. Um, so I'm only going to go through two examples in this video, and then we'll go through some more together in class. So the general formula for these is going to be the integral of the area of a cross section. So the area formula is going to depend on the shape that you that the cross sections are. Most of the time it's going to be circles or semicircles. Um, squares are really common. Triangles occasionally, um, but it's mostly going to be squares, maybe rectangles. It's not usually anything super complicated. Um, it's going to be something geometric where you can find the area using geometry. So if you are taking the cross sections perpendicular to the x axis, then you're going to be integrating with respect to x. If your cross sections are perpendicular to the y axis, then you're going to be integrating with respect to y. So you need to be really careful that you read the question carefully and that when you're setting up the integral, you know what numbers you're looking at. So when you're integrating with respect to x, your bounds of integration are going to be x values. When you are integrating with respect to y, your bounds of integration are going to be y values. And everything needs to be in terms of y. If you're integrating with respect to y as far as the variables go, everything needs to be in terms of x if you are integrating with respect to x. So again, it is going to take some practice because you guys are not used to integrating with respect to y. Most of the problems that we've done have all been in terms of x. So it is going to be a little bit different when you have to integrate with respect to y. The two examples that I'm going to do here are going to be with respect to x. Um, we'll get into ones that are going to be with respect to y in the other videos which is also more common. With cross sections, a lot of times they are perpendicular to the x-axis, so it is more common to integrate with respect to x. Um, and then with this, the solids of revolution, it's going to be, it could go either way. It's not like one is more common than the other. So we'll do some practice with that for the other types of solids that you have. Okay, so this one already has the picture for you. Most of the time you are not given the picture, and so I'll explain what you have to do if you don't have the picture. So you have a solid so that its base is the region between the x-axis and one arch of y equals 2 sine x. So this shape right here, that's the base of your solid. And then the cross sections are going to be perpendicular perpendicular to the x-axis and they are going to be semicircles. So that's the little red part right here. A lot of times these aren't super easy to visualize. So if you can draw a picture of at least the base, if you can't draw the 3D shape, that's totally fine. But if you draw the base, that's going to be helpful. But this one should hopefully help you see what it's going to look like. If I had infinitely many of these semicircles, it's going to create a solid, and that's the solid that we are finding the volume of. So usually when I'm doing these, again, the picture is given to us here, so you don't have to do this, but usually what I do is I just draw the base, and then I draw either a side length if it's going to be a square, um, the diameter if it's going to be a circle or a semicircle, so I draw some representative 
important piece of the shape. So like this one, I would draw the diameter that is perpendicular to the x-axis. So we know that it's going to be the integral of the area, so we need to find the area here. And the bounds of integration are going to be the x values where the, um, the sine curve intersects the x-axis, which I can see here from the picture. If we didn't have the, if we didn't have the picture, then you would have to set this equal to zero and solve, but I can see that this one is going to be zero to pi. So those are going to be my bounds of integration. The shape of the solid is going to determine, or the shape of the cross section is going to determine what the integrand is. So I'm going to do this separately before I plug it in. So because it's a semicircle, the formula for area of a semicircle is going to be pi r squared over 2. So we need to figure out what the radius is in terms of x because we need to integrate with respect to x. So this distance is the diameter. So that entire distance is going to be the function value. So the diameter is 2 sine x. So that means the radius, I cut that in half. So the radius is going to be sine x. So this is going to be pi times sine squared x, and then that whole thing over 2. So this one has an additional divided by 2. Um, this, you know, we divided by 2 to get the radius, but the formula also has divided by 2 because the cross sections are semicircles, not circles. So this is the area formula. This is going to be your integrand. The pi over 2, because that's a constant, I can factor that out. You don't have to, but sometimes that makes it a little bit easier. So this is your integrand. Right now, you guys don't know how to integrate this by hand. Eventually, you will. We won't get into that until chapter 10, so not something to worry about right now. A lot of times, these questions are calculator anyway. So this would be one that you would plug into the calculator. You need to make sure that you are in radian mode and you should be getting 2.467. And I know I've said it before, but make sure that if you guys are doing something in the calculator and you have a decimal, so you don't have an exact answer, that you put at least three numbers after the decimal. You can have more than that, but you have to have at least three, otherwise it's wrong. If you're getting something different than this, then you may not be in radian mode. This one, I'm going to change it. We're going to do square cross sections. Um, if you want to see the triangular one, you can look in your textbook. I don't think you would be asked to do something with equilateral triangles. Um, that's what the problem was here. So we're going to change it. We changed it to squares. Um, if you do have triangles, which does happen occasionally, it's usually going to be isosceles, which is a little bit easier. And so we'll do some of those in class. Squares are the most common, so I wanted to do a square example with you guys. So with this one, there is no picture, so we need to draw a picture. So I'm going to draw the two lines. So we have 1 minus x over 2 and negative 1 plus x over 2. So this one is going to be like this. Um, may not totally be drawn to scale, but that's close. So this right here is the base. And I always pick a different color. The cross sections are going to be perpendicular to the x-axis and the base is going, or the side length is going from one line to the other line. So I always draw just one line. So you have squares sticking out of this triangle base. So it's going to, if you actually had the solid, it looks like a piece of cake. So we know it's going to be the integral of the area. And the bounds of integration are going to be where, well, we know that because it's going to be bounded by the, um, the y-axis, we know it's going to be zero to something. So we need to find where these two lines intersect, which if you set them equal to each other, you should be getting two. X equals two as the intersection. So those are going to be your bounds of integration. So area for the integrand, we have a square, so it's going to be the side length squared. 
So I need to figure out what is that side length equal. And this distance right here is the side length, which is going to be this line minus this line. So you need to figure out which one is higher than the other, which you can see this one is the one that has the negative slope. This is the one that has the positive slope. So it's going to be 1 minus x over 2 minus negative 1 plus x over 2, that whole thing squared. So this does simplify. If you have a question that's asking you to set up but do not evaluate, which is common with um, volume questions, then you don't have to simplify this. If you're going to be actually evaluating the integral, you may want to simplify it. Even if you're just plugging it into the calculator, it does help to simplify it a little bit. But that's just something to keep in mind is that you don't have to simplify these things unless you are specifically asked to. But it does simplify, so I'm going to do it. So I'm going to distribute the negative, which is going to turn this into a plus 1 and turn that into a minus x over 2. And then I'm going to combine like terms. So it's going to be 2. And then these are both negative, so I can combine those, which is going to be x. Minus x squared dx. If you were going to integrate this by hand, which again, you probably wouldn't have to, it's not that hard, but it's just tedious. So what you would have to do is foil this out and then integrate each piece separately. But this one we'll just do in the calculator. So if you plug it into the calculator, you are going to get 2.6 repeating. So in the last one, I said you have to have three numbers after the decimal place. If something repeats, then you can just put this and that implies that it's going to be going on forever. So you don't have to write it as 2.667. You can if you want to round it. Usually with something like this, because it is possible to get a fraction, sometimes like in the last one, if you try to turn it into a fraction, it's not going to turn into a fraction. But if you can, I usually like to do that just so it's an exact answer and the calculator will do it for you. So you should get eight thirds. If you want to try it by hand, you can do this one by hand. But again, a lot of times these types of problems, if they are not calculator questions, are going to be just setting up the integral, which you can write it like this. You can write the integrand as this one, this one. You can, any of those steps is fine to write the integrand as. So in words, what you are doing with these is sketch the solid um, if you're really good at drawing 3D, that might be helpful to you to draw the actual 3D solid. That's not something that you have to do. That's not something that I usually do. I usually just draw the cross section. Um, or not the cross. I usually draw some representative line in the cross section. I usually draw the base of the solid. That's what I think is going to be the most helpful. Find a formula for the area. Um, this could also be a of y. So if you are integrating with respect to y, you're going to need it in terms of y, which again, we'll do in um, the later videos. Find the bounds of integration. So where do the two curves intersect or where does this curve intersect the x-axis? Whatever your base is, you need to find intersection points. And then integrate if you are being asked to actually find the volume. So if the question says find volume, you need to evaluate the integral. If the question is saying set up but do not evaluate, then you don't have to. So again, I'm going to do separate videos for the different types of volumes that we have. It's really important to make sure that you read the question carefully so that you know what type of question it's asking you for. So this one is all cross sections, and then the next ones we are going to look at will be ones where you're revolving something about an axis.